Hello there and a very good afternoon. My name is Samson Kasumba. This is NBS Television. NBS Now is the name of the bulletin. The second of four we began with sunrise at six. It is NBS Now. That later on at seven, it will be Amasengeje in Luganda. And we will cap the set at nine with live at nine. You can also catch extension of the, these stories at nowpost.co.ug. It is the 7th day of December 2017. On this day in 1942, the U.S. Navy, we're talking United States Navy, launched the USS New Jersey, the largest battleship built by the time. We'll leave history coming to current affairs. We'll begin with tensions. These erupted yesterday afternoon along the boundary between Butaleja and Budaka district with the Banyole and the Bagweri are choosing each other of trespass. Members of the two warring tribes had converged to meet the IGP General Kali Kehura and the State Minister for Lands Passes Namuganza who were in the area to solve the long-standing conflict of uh, a fatal swamp. And of course, after the IGP did leave, then he was joined there by AIGP Asan Kasinji, the political commissar of the force. We want to go and speak uh, to uh, an officer, PR of the region, who understands how this is shaping up. A very good afternoon. I do understand the name is uh, Kawali. Afande, a very good afternoon. In the area we're dealing with our lead story here tensions that could actually be tribal in the eastern region over a fatal swamp the igp has already been there he has been followed by aigp asan kasinje the political commissar of the police force uh, afande sawali a very good afternoon are you there Well, well, we will try to catch up on that one. Uh, the tensions are coming in from uh, the eastern region there, and it is between the Banyole and another tribal group uh, quivering over a fatal swamp there. And that's the story we are watching. We're trying to make sure we get uh, the spokesperson of the Ghana Police Force who will give us uh, some of the details that came out of a meeting between the locals and the Inspector General of Police who has now sent over as his deputy, AIGP Asan Kasinje, the political commissar of the Uganda Police Force, again to follow on the same story. That's the story we are going uh, to be catching up on. But again, doing accountability is the next subject we want uh, to be dealing with uh, at about, I think it's about five minutes uh, on top of half the hour. But let's talk accountability right about now. Many local government leaders in Uganda cannot interpret budget figures leading to poor interpretation of those. Let's look at the, uh, the story, the details of this story. Ndeba is one of the busiest and most populated suburbs of Kampala. I spent a big part of my afternoon asking some of the locals here what they would consider in electing local leaders, especially councillors. <laughs> Most of the responses indicate that people based on political reasons, friendship and other factors while choosing their leaders. Few based on competence and academic qualifications. A report released by African Freedom Information Center shows that more than 80% of leaders at the local government cannot interpret budget figures due to limited knowledge on financial issues. Another thing having the capacity to review such budgets. So many times uh, we found that especially at the local level, many don't have really the capacity. Ismail Damba is one of the 34 KCCA councillors. He supports this argument saying it is disappointing that someone who is supposed to oversee the redistribution of resources cannot interpret best figures such as revenue 
and expenditure. They are professional, but they, they lack still the habit of reading. Because most of the counselors, we get reports we, from the technical wing. We get reports from different organizations, but most of the counselors don't give in time to read those reports. Gilbert Sendugwa, the executive director of the organization, says this lack of financial knowledge has led to some leaders to award contracts to firms based on friendship and not competence. Uh, the contract price is not informed or determined by what is going to be done, but rather who is paying. The survey leading to this report was done in northern districts of Karmoja, Nebi, Mitiana in Central, and Barra in Western Uganda. Nabakoza Lydia, NBS. Yes, uh, we now have caught up uh, with uh, the spokesperson of the Uganda Police Force within the area. We are talking Toro here. Matters to do with tribal conflict over a fatal swamp, and uh, it is Afande Somali. So, Wali, who is on the line. A very good afternoon, Afande. Afani, what is the latest we have on the meeting yes, between it? the IGP and the locals that happened yesterday? As we continue to trying uh, to get uh, the spokesperson here. Do we have you, Afande? A very good afternoon. Afani, can you hear me? Well, as we, catch, as we catch up on that, let's go to matters uh, to do with the International Crimes Division of the High Court, which is developing new guidelines aimed at stopping the use of torture in and inside the judicial process. The head of the division, Justice Moses Muchivi, says they are concerned that the prosecution still uses torture to collect evidence. One of the proposals is for courts to refuse to try suspects who have been grossly tortured as well as holding officers who use torture accountable for their actions personally. The latest award of 1.8 billion shillings to Kawesi murder suspects came as a major blow to government, but only confirmed the use of torture by security agencies. This comes amid several claims by suspects that they were tortured at the different police facilities in the country. Now, the head of the International Crimes Division of the High Court, Justice Moses Muchivi, says this should stop. He makes a proposal that the courts could decline to hear cases in which suspects are grossly tortured. And if you cut out acts of torture and somebody is injured and this is proved against you as an officer, you are going to pay compensation to that, co to that victim individually. If, uh, the, the courts now make it a policy that those conditions will be, will be taken into account, then that's what we have been waiting for, and it will be a great step forward. Justice Muchibi also wants government to implement the directive to have security officers who torture people held personally liable for their actions. And a senior officer who learns about the activities of a junior officer, though he has not ordered the junior officer to do that, who takes no action about it, also has responsibility. Justice Muchivi is also not impressed with the act of rearresting suspects who have either been granted bail or those who have been cleared of charges, especially within the court premises. If somebody is granted bail by a court of law in respect of an existing offense, you don't wait until somebody is going out as if you didn't know. Human rights lawyer Ladislaus Rokafuzi welcomes the proposal, but says it must be a concerted effort by the judiciary and not individual judges. If it is a, something that has been decided by the judiciary, that approach would be the best. That is a very great forward leap into rule of law, good governance, and the preservation of human rights. Justice Muchibi was speaking at the first human rights conference by the Muslim Center for Justice and Law. Organizations and individuals were awarded to appreciate their role in fighting for human rights in the country. 
NBS Television was recognized for giving a voice on human rights to diverse categories of people without discrimination. John Baptist Imokola, NBS. Well, we'll be crossing over to Mbali where the Commission of Inquiry into Land Matters, this one is headed by Lady Justice Catherine Bamgemerire, continues to handle cases in Mbali district where public land has been grabbed by individuals in collusion with municipal officials. We're talking local government officials here. That's how we call them for those of you watching internationally. Now, the commission is currently handling the Mbali Forest Reserve land that has been encroached on outstandingly by a one Hamis Mansa. Despite warnings by the IGG, Uganda Police Force, the NFA, National Forest Authority, and other authorities, Mansa, with impunity, has since refused to vacate the forest land where he, Hamis Mansa, intends to put a recreation center. Jordan Mubangizi is in Mbali. He has seen Hamis Mansa and he is reporting live for us. Jordan how come Hamis Mansa is above the law and acts as if he owns the law? Uh, thank you very much, Samson. Uh, like you rightly put it, we have a problem in this country, and, and, and to be honest with you, our problem is impunity. I mean, how, how does the IGG recommend, how does the IGG warn the Uganda Police Force and, and all those uh, state entities you've talked about uh, tell you to vacate a state property and, and you insist and you go ahead, you know, to forge uh, titles and, and, and stuff like that. Th that's our biggest problem. And it's not just about um, uh, Hamis Mansa alone. Everybody is doing that around Mali. And uh, it tells you that uh, if the land question is going to be um, addressed, certainly the state has to come in and come in hard. Some of these people need to, need to answer um, and answer for their actions. Samson, um, I other revelations also tell you of, uh, of, of how government officials at the municipality shared houses uh, amongst themselves, like they were sharing maybe, I, I don't know, food, you know, um, grab and take, grab and take, even when some of them were out of office. It's, 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 it's amazing. There are stories that you don't want to listen to. So, I, I mean, it's, it's something that we need, to, we need to wake up as a country and, and, and make sure that these people are brought to book, Samson. Is Hamis Mansa working alone or does he have other persons helping him in this? Because stories show that when persons act with this level of impunity, they have huge backers. Is Hamis alone in this? Samson, it, this cannot be a one man's show. It's definitely a racket of people that are colluding to ensure some of these things go away. For instance, I can tell you that uh, for you to, to, to grab forest land and for you to, to, to ignore warnings by the IGG and the Uganda Police Force and all that, you definitely have to collude with um, the Area Land Committee, the District Land Board. You have to collude with some officials in government, uh, the Uganda Land Commission. I can tell you that, uh, I mean, when Mansa was before the commission, he, he definitely uh, mentioned some of the names. He's, uh, he's been working with and it tells you of, of how big the problem is. It's not just about an individual going into the forest and of course defying orders from government officials and the state at that, but um, the, the problem stems from a way the, the LC1 and, 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 and those uh, officials at the lower ground up to the bigger offices, for instance, like in the Uganda Land Commission. So some of these um, are, are quite big that uh, the, the powers that be might need to crack the whip and crack it hard. Samson. Uh, very finally, Jordan, uh, when these things go on, uh, what was on the faces of the commissioners? Were they shocked or have they been shocked too often uh, that now they are used to this level of things? Well, um, for, 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 from all the parts of the country that we've traveled to, it, um, it's more or less the same. Uh, collusion, then of course uh, grabbing and, and how these people, you know, money exchanging hands illegally and, and stuff like that. It's more or less the same, but uh, certainly someone has to pay a, a price and, and uh, if, 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 if names like Mansa come in, definitely it's their turn to pay the price. And, and one thing I can also tell you is that um, 
they are not they are not being let to go uh, scot free mansa as i speak right now is in custody uh he's recording a statement because even when the revelations uh, he made were shocking uh the commission felt he was holding too much information which would be vital for the commission to compile its report and the lady justice catherine mamgemerile then ordered for his um, detention or yeah, call it that, uh, so he could record more statement and reveal more information. So th th that's the process, and probably it, it could be one of those processes we need to go through as a country to ensure that s such um, illegal, illegal happenings come to an end and the people are brought to book. Samson. Jordan, after covering these things, when you go back to your hotel room, do you sleep or do they give you sleepless nights? Very briefly there. Uh, certainly. Certainly, Samson, uh, you, you sit and think about things and we wonder whether in the next, in the next 20 years you, we, shall, we shall have a country or this country is going to belong to a few people because I'm talking about, for instance, in Changwari where someone owns 60, 50 square miles of land and he's claiming, illegally claiming that and he's trying to evict 60,000 people. And you come here, for instance, in Mbali and someone is evicting people and is evicting the state. I mean, we are talking about an individual evicting a state from its property. We are talking about individuals grabbing state property. So in the next 20 years, shall we have a state owning property? Shall we have a state or the state is, people are going to be the state and, and uh, that's what we shall have. So this, they, somehow they give you sleepless nights, but um, certainly I'm, I'm one of those people that uh, are contributing at least to ensure that uh, this, there's a solution to all this. And uh, with my camera, I'll do everything it takes to ensure that the land question is resolved once and for all, Samson. Jordan, uh, certainly there's no question about your contribution and that is expected at 7 in Amasengeje and at 9 with Live at 9. Moving away from land, before I get very emotional because I also have my own personal encounters with uh, land grabbers going again uh, to matters, land matters, tension, matters, tribal, Butaleja and Budaka districts, center of controversy between the Banyole and the Bagwere are choosing each other of trespass. It is the contested land we're talking here is uh, a fatal swamp. Persons contesting over a swamp. I thought that should be protected territory. IGP Kalik Hirohara has been there and then lately it has been uh, the political commissioner of the Uganda Police Force, AIGP Asan Kasinje. But now we're talking to Afande Kamulia Sowali who is the spokesperson of the force in the, the area. Finally, we do have him online. Now, Afande, a very good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. I find your bosses have been in the area and one, I think, very, very recently. Is the matter sorted or is this trouble brewing that the police continues uh, to need to watch? I beg your pardon? Uh, your bosses, the IGP, AIGP, have been in the area. Do you think the matter is solved? Yes, the matter has been solved. How did the matter get solved? Uh, on Tuesday, on Tuesday, uh, IGP General Karika Ihura came with the with the Hona Hona passes Namuganza with the State Minister for Lands, and we met the people of of Butaleja and we shared a lot with them. That was on Tuesday, then on, on Wednesday, we met a group of Budaka. On that day, IGP came with the state minister for water and environment. That is Samu Chepkaru. And these are some of the following resolutions that were are made. One, the people of Budaka and Butaleja were ordered to vacate the wetland. And right now, government has taken over the wetland. Two, these people were given uh, an ultimatum of six months to remove all the their or crops or harvest whatever they have in the swamp. Government is coming up with alternative solutions. Government is bringing uh, irrigation scheme, then bee farming. 
uh, because as police we have been really up and down because of these people fighting and even lose, people losing their lives and properties. Thank you very much, Afande. That is Afande, that's ASP of uh, Kamulia Sawali, who is a spokesperson for Uganda Police Force within the area where there have been some clashes of uh, a fatal swamp. We leave uh, that. It's about uh, coming to the top of the hour, about eight minutes to 1 p.m. East African Standard Time. We'll go to Parliament. It is the 10th Parliament, and uh, lately uh, the Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee has been to State House. Mental health bill has been placed before the uh, Health Committee chaired by Dr. Michael Bukenya. Let's get an update, a sense of what exactly is the business at Parliament today. And Sam Ibanda Mugabe, black tie, white shirt, very smart, is live for us. Sam, a very good afternoon. Good afternoon, Samson Kasum. Of course, even good afternoon to all those who are viewing us live now from Parliament. Uh, Samson, I want to inform you that a number of activities are taking place, though we don't have the parliamentary sitting moving on. We expect that the parliamentary sitting will be resuming on next week, that will be Tuesday. And we'll, of course, the Speaker of Parliament, right, Honorable Rebecca Itola Kadaga, is expected to preside over the long awaited uh, parliamentary sitting where we are likely to see the League and Parliamentary Affairs Committee chaired by MP Jacob of both of both table the report that's a uh, of course on the controversial constitution amendment b 2017 that was tabled by igala west legislator lafal majes of course uh, the committee has been scrutinizing this bill uh, for almost one month and right now uh, they are engaged in a closed door meeting at lake victoria Sena hotel that's in chigo of course they're writing the report and on tuesday we expect the report to be tabled on the floor of parliament but samson i want to inform you that the members of the opposition right now they were led by the acting leader of opposition, that's Rwandi Kajinda Mogume, and of course is the uh, Lukonjiri Monspaite member of parliament. They had a presser, and of course they were announcing the next move on the edge bill. They're saying next week will be Toji Kwatako, which where they're appealing to all Ugandans, regardless of their status, regardless of the age, tribe, region, to start putting on red attires. So we expect that next week, uh, according to the members of the opposition, they're saying from the bottom up the top, uh, of course, they'll be putting on red. That's the appeal to all Ugandans. And of course, they're even saying on Christmas Day, they're saying Uganda should put on red attires even when, when, when they're going to churches. But oh, no, oh, uh, we can only say time will only tell whether the appeal will be answered by Ugandans. They're saying next week all shops will be closed. I don't know whether the IGP, the Inspector General, Police General Kale Kaiula, will allow all these uh, requests uh, they're making to the Ugandans. But of course, I also want to inform you that the coordinator of this campaign, that's Butambala, county member of parliament, and of course is the shadow internal affairs minister, Mwanga Muhammad Chivumbi, was also saying uh, that, uh, that every day they'll be having different pressers to address the nation on what is next. And of course, they're also warning the SFC uh, for this type, not there, and attack them, especially when they're deliberating on the floor of parliament. That's it, on Tuesday next week. Also, the other issue they were raising, they were urging to the parliamentary commission to ensure that it can install cameras and screens across surrounding the, the August House to see that Ugandans can come and watch all the proceedings and see which members of parliament will be voting for uh, for this bill and those that will be voting against the controversial constitutional amendment bill that will see the lifting of the presidential age limit. Of course, you remember very well that this very week the league and parliamentary affairs committee interfaced with the last witness that is president yuri kakutam seven and openly he said he supports the bill so what we are waiting to see is that tuesday whether that be uh, the report will be tabled on the floor of parliament or whether they will ask more time to see that the report can be tabled either on wednesday or thursday but what i can confirm to you according to the members of from the opposition they're saying the report is likely to be tabled on Tuesday. But of course we are waiting and then uh, we shall uh, ensure that uh, as NBS will bring you the details of whatever will be happening here at the uh, here at Parliament and those against the lifting of the term limit from five to seven years they are saying this is likely to be diversionally. But I want to get back to you but still we shall bring you the details of whatever is happening here at Parliament at 7 p.m. in Amasengeje and 9 p.m. live at 9. Back to you Samson I'm Sam Ivan here at Parliament. Uh, thank you very much, Sam Ivan Damugabi, my colleague, reporting live for us 
at Parliament. It is the 10th Parliament in session. Whatever happens on Tuesday, if it does happen, it will be live. You can certainly show, be sure we will have your back on us unless somebody stops us from airing that live again. You can also keep your eye at nowpost.co.ug. What we don't have, they normally do have. Talking Human Rights Government has launched Human Rights Resource Books for Senior One and three students to aid human rights education in uh, schools. Uh, Garvin says that despite the ban, caning still exists in schools, exposing learners to pupils and students affecting learning there. The National Curriculum Development Center, working with Huronet, funded by United Nations Human Rights Office, have for the last four years been working on a manual that will help enlightened teachers and learners about their plight. We do have details of this story. Many correspondences about violence against children in schools, where students are greatly battered and they have been injured. Many have lost sight. Many have been left disabled. And I think this situation should not be allowed to continue. So I'm happy to be here when I witness another change of mindset through human rights education. Uh, we believe that if we target young people with correct human rights messages at an early stage, uh, it has a very huge poten potential of influencing change. And this change begins from individuals. Uh, if we have citizens who are aware of their rights and responsibilities, we believe that we'll be, we will be raising a generation of young people who are not only aware of their rights, but um, conscious of their responsibilities as well towards the family, towards the community, as well as towards the nation. There's a lot of abuse in our schools, including the physical side. There's a lot of emotional, which is also another human rights abuse. And sometimes we think we have not done anything wrong. When we call that stubborn boy a pumpkin, you're like a pumpkin. What did you, you came to grow. That is an automatic abuse of my rights. Well, a very good afternoon and thank you so much for staying with us here at NBS Now. My name uh, continues to be Samson Kasumba. We want to go live to Jinja where we do have Hakim Kanyera. We are hearing matters to do with roads. A very good afternoon, Hakim. Uh, well, well, it's I, not Hakim, it's the speaker uh, the of Jinja. Good afternoon, sir. What's the status of the wards in Jinja and what is the municipality doing to fix them? Well, as it stands now, Jinja is now in progress on this road. And I want to tell the people of Jinja that the moment this uh, program commenced of Usumid, now we are still doing earth work. I want to call upon the people of Jinja to stay calm. The people of Jinja to observe now the new road signs, to observe the diversions that have been created. And I want with confidence to tell the people of Jinja that it is too early to preempt that the contractor is incompetent. Because as we stand, the contractor has only begun on the roadworks. So let us give time. I want to pledge before the people of Jinja that if the works don't move as promised, it will be the Speaker of the Municipal Council with the community to riot against the works that will not be repeating the amounts of money that were budgeted to work on the road of Main Street and Virginia. 
uh, did that did I hear you saying that if the works do not go as well as they should, you put the matter on your head? Does that suggest that you will resign as a sign of um, defiance or, I mean, demonstrating against the contractor that you have hired? Well, as you, you, you well be, may be aware that this, contract, this contractor and procurement was mad with a lot of inconsistencies and corruption but all that we did in the faith of not risking losing the world bank fund because we realize we are almost we are actually behind schedule by three months we are behind schedule by three months so as an authority we said no whatever the inconsistencies that we had in the procurement of this tender let us go by the one we have, who is now star contra contractors. We are saying, in the event that the works don't go as agreed, as contracted with the star and the consultant, we, the leaders, shall really support to demonstrate against the works that will not have gone well. That is the position we want to give the people of Jinja. But as it stands now, it is too early to say that... In terms of leaving your offices, even though you, the leaders, hired the contractor. Well, we'll leave uh, the, the speaker of uh, the Jinja Municipality The contractor doesn't stick to the plans and the schedules. The leaders will join the people to rally against the contractor. We'll continue to watch that through. Our man on the ground, Hakim Kanyere. Now, talking, serving and talking soldiers in the business of serving money, not bullets. This time around, uh, a poor serving culture is affecting operations of uh, circles. This is according to Major General Samuel Kevuma, the chairperson of Wazalendo Sako, very much associated with the men in military fatigue. Major General Kavma says this is negatively affecting the country's economic development, leaving majority of the population employed by the agricultural sector, which is overseen as well by the UPDF. Uganda suffers from a poor saving culture informed by local martial bank penetration in the countryside. Major General Samuel Kavuma, there was a Lendo Sako board chairman, notes that the culture of serving among the armed forces is of great concern, necessitating constant sensitization. It has been a big challenge, one of the big challenges to instill this spirit or culture of saving into Ugandans. Because Ugandans, we believe in working and consuming. We plan for today, not for tomorrow. But for the last uh, 10 years, our role as leadership has been sensitized and mobilize our members to show the benefits for saving. Because you never know what will happen tomorrow, therefore you have to save so that tomorrow you get better life. The circle build as the largest in capitalization brings together all units in the army. Brigadier Simon Ochin, the chief executive officer, says changing technology poses challenges in the administration of the institution. Despite this, savings have continued to grow annually. Brigadier Ochin says more financial literacy is needed to enable men in uniform make informed decisions. We to do this, but of course we, have challenge, we are challenged by technology which is very expensive. But the technology, we are trying to do what we can. We have so far procured uh, some technology and we are about to roll out the services of uh, over-the-counter services with the Post Bank, which is a government bank. And we are also about to give our members mobile banking services where they will be able to get uh, SMS alerts on their phones and they can get information about their accounts when they are seated at home. So, the challenge number two is technology, but we are work, uh, coming around that. This was during a congratulation dinner for three senior leaders of the circle promoted last week by President Shiwari Museveni.
Well, let's find out what is trending on social media. And I think if you look at social media trends here, what is trending is Sedu Uganda, and persons are tweeting about that. So uh, Sedu is uh, trending. And, and the reason is, of course, we're talking the Citizens Coalition for Electoral Democracy in Uganda, Sedu membership organization. Of course, individuals and organizations, they are at Democracy House on the outskirts of uh, the town. Those of you watching internationally, and members have come to uh, basically be around as their annual report is being presented and, of course, forging a way forward going into election season 2021. That's exactly what you see here. Pass our first those, I think, pictures of arriving. We are holding a membership platform meeting today from 9 a.m. And uh, that's the tweet here. Some very interesting tweets here. Uh, Samwise Gambi Sedu has uh, 361 members of these 43% are female and only 38% of the members are above the age of 35. Kaima spokesperson, Uganda Police Force is also arriving very sharp there, being greeted. And uh, the boss there, uh, Livingstone Sewanyana, PhD, talking. He understands the law quite well. Those are some of the tweets uh, coming through here. Somebody here enjoying their journalism cross legs. That shoe is certainly not cheap, I can tell you. Uh, some of the images coming here. And of course, uh, you know that face, uh, God, but Mushabe, he has that face out there. This guy has had his own <laughs> encounters and his organization picked up all the attention of the, uh, the organization that Kaima works for. Ken Luchamzi and his Ludicha is also out there at uh, Sedu talking with an umbrella. Ken Luchamzi has sort of disappeared from the scene, but every so often he comes by and uh, Simon Kaheru who heads, uh, Simon Kaheru also, who does head Sedu, is also out there. Well, we will leave it out there. Of the persons that I know is not here at this function, Michael Chigos is on top of the list, and the reason is because he is somewhere in the business of lunchtime sports. So, Mkamawangi, Chichija. Tulina vinji, ranga bulijo. Mwari, tukenda kubu, lida kukreni zedda di monsike, timu ya ba seneno juzite ya wangula mpira kwa sekafa, ate tuba tujisubi roku wangula. So tukenda kubu, lida, naba tuwe bako ze, mte katekeyo, ate ni mida la vinji nyoku vange, nsonga ya UEFA Europa League ojimanyi, na yeni na kuzuno, ya funa amanyi. Ure nsonga, muli muaba nene, abali mpakazi. Banga mentu basi na ya genze mumizanyo java waka wa parliament yoku tunurida form ya Muhammad nsele kwa enzo kumuita mungwana. <laughs> enzo kumuita kwa tebele gori na kuzino. Hey. Teba amwe mkreni za watista atule. Owa gari ya wa yeti mamujozi namba muende ila doza. Tagu, tagu suwazi za achikute bulu unji nyo nerele alimunsike. Okay. Ila na chomu nenda kubanga nchomu. Na teba. Waka papula wa mteke kwa. Waka papula ndo za ngeenda kubabu ulira. Kale. Masebo <laughs> nevanyabe vijoku wa vya Michael Chikozi mlunch time sports. Muli ndidi ya masenge jesawe jaku vya muye njini. Uh, Ngobude vuzeke diba. Live at 9 will also be coming at 9 p.m. As far as I'm concerned, I am hungry and thinking lunch.